Hello, let's have a look at how for loops work in programming. So a for loop is our only real example of what we would call count controlled iteration. So count controlled iteration is where we have iteration that repeats a set number of times. I can look at the for loop and know exactly how many times it's going to repeat. Whereas we can't say that about something like a while loop, which we'll look at in the next video. So it always loops a definitive number of times and it will never be infinite. Again, unlike a while loop. So a for loop has a variable which determines how many times it will loop. Here is the syntax of a for loop in OCR exam reference language. You can use Python if you want to, you can use any language you want to, as long as we can see the same sort of elements to it. So what do we have here? Well, count is our loop variable. Often we have I here, I've just used count for some variety, but it can be any variable name we want. We then assign it to be one. So this is our starting point for our loop variable. It's going to start at one in this particular loop. And five is our end point. And in OCR's version of this for loop, this is inclusive. So count is going to reach five and stay there. Whereas Python, if you know Python, Python has an exclusive end in its for loop. The code which is indented inside it is part of this for loop. So this line here, print count, is what is going to repeat as the for loop goes round and round and round. And next count is, is how we end for loops. In Python, we don't have to do this, but next count is basically saying, move on to the next value of count. By default, it just adds one to this. So what's happening when this code actually runs? Well, count is initially one, and we print count to the user, so the user sees one on their screen. We then move on to our next count, which by default just adds one to it. So now count is two, and we print two on the screen. And each time we go around, we're checking to see, is our current value of count equal to five? It can be equal to five, but it can't be equal to six. So um, we print two, next count is three. Is three equal to five? No. So I print count again. Next count, we move on to four. Is four equal to five? No. So I print count, I print four. Now next count, we have five. Now is five equal to five? Yes, it is. But because it's inclusive, I'm gonna do this one more time. So print count, go to five. Count is now six, however, we only go up to five, so therefore the loop ends. For this particular example, printing one to five, I could just do five print statements. However, this is inefficient. I'm wasting time typing this out. I'm more likely to make mistakes. It takes up more memory space. And of course, if I was printing one to a million, that then becomes a massive difference in the length of code. We want our code to be as short as possible, ideally. Let's look at a couple more examples because we can also modify the step. The step is how much it changes each time. So let's say we're told to count down from 10 to one and print out each integer. How would I do this? Well, if I was doing an ERL, I would do four. I would then set a loop counter. So let's go to the classic I, which is used most of the time. And what is I initially gonna be? Well, I is initially gonna be 10. And we want it, go, we want it to go until it is equal to one. Bear in mind if that's inclusive. This time now we can add a step. So optionally we can add the word step, then we can follow it with a number. And this step is what happens to i each time it iterates. So by default, it's plusing one. This time around, I want it to count down for each integer. Therefore, I want to not plus one, I want to subtract one each time round. I then would do an indentation on my page. Really important that you keep it as a gap at the start of this line. I would then print out i, which is my loop counter. Initially, i is 10, then it'll be nine, then it'll be eight, all the way down to one. And in OCR ERL, we need to dedent, so go back against our margin, and then write next i. And that's how we'd count down from 10 to one. How would we then now print all multiples of seven from 14 up to and including 49? Well, we're not gonna do loads of print statements because that's not the video, but also that's just not very sensible. I'm gonna use a for loop, of course. Let's call this loop variable multiple, just to add a bit of variety, but i is used by far the majority of times. What's my first value of multiple gonna be here? Well, I want it to be 14 initially. I want it to go up to and including 49. I could use an if statement with mod maybe in my for loop, but a simple way of doing this question would just be to set the step to be seven. So that each time I add seven and simply just print out multiple each time round. And then I don't wanna to forget to do next multiple as the last line in the OCR ERL syntax.